Well, hello, friends, and welcome to another Ask Zach. Today, we are going to talk about the birth of the fuzz pedal. So it all starts right here in Nashville, Tennessee, and we're going to tell you the story. It gets kind of glossed over because it was Nashville and it was kind of a country pop session, but, uh, you know, that's, uh, this, this is where it, where it all began. So we're going we're gonna to talk about fuzz and, uh, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about the, uh, the base six and what was used on this recording, a little bit of the history on that, and uh, we're just going to have a good time. All right, so if you've been enjoying the show and you haven't already done it, well, please go down in the corner and subscribe. Also, if you've been, if you enjoy the video, please hit like because that helps the algorithm. Also, uh, if you've already subscribed, then I appreciate you supporting the show. So there's a lot of different ways. There's tip jar information in the description, or you can go to askzack.com and you can pick up a piece of merch like this, you know, it's a sickness, or you can support the channel on a monthly basis via friends of Ask Zach, and you can find out more at, again at the website. All right, so the lick that I played, that's ground zero for fuzz. That's it. That's, that's where it, it, it comes from. So in 1960, uh, pop country artist Marty Robbins, who had had some hits with uh, a song called Singing the Blues. It was a big kind of crossover hit. Another one called A White Sport Coat and a Pink Carnation. Um, yeah, he uh, he recorded another you know kind of mid tempo tune. It was called "Don't Worry" or "Don't Worry About Me," and it was kind of a typical Nashville sound kind of uh, tune that was designed to be a crossover hit. And so it doesn't have pedal steel guitar or fiddle on it at all. You mainly hear you know drums, upright bass, a lot of piano, a little bit of guitar, and. The song's, you know, kind of going along, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you know, everything stops, and then Grady Martin, who, one of the finest guitar players in, in the world, and one of the finest in Nashville, and part of the Nashville A-Team, he had a, uh, a Dan Electro six-string bass, and he was plugged into a channel on the board that was going out. The transformer was, you know, on, on its way out and it created this fuzz sound. And so they wisely chose to not use this sound until the solo because it kind of would have been off-putting or you would have lost your element of surprise. And so all of a sudden out of nowhere, everything stops. Here comes in this fuzz bass. And he starts off with this really cool bend. You know, bends into it and then starts playing this kind of you know, basically a, a bass line, a kind of a busy bass line. And uh, it really uh, set the tune up for success. And it went all the way to number one on Billboard's Top 100, which means basically it was a number one pop hit, and then it went number three country. So this was a pop song. And so I've never understood why a lot of the historians kind of back away from this, and they like to give too much credit to like Link Ray or even to Paul Burleson with the rock and roll trio. And of course, some of those guys were slicing speakers. Paul Burleson was, was pulling one of his output tubes partially out. And that is kind of a fuzzy sound. But what's different about this is this was the first like really big pop hit that had fuzz and it was fuzz bass. And the engineer, Glenn Snotty, who was on the session, he ends up developing the first fuzz pedal for Gibson, and that's the Maestro Fuzz Tone. So here's what happened after the session. Well, the song becomes a number one, and of course, everyone else wants that sound. The problem is that it's, it's a channel going out on a mixing console. So they don't want to use it for that reason. They want to save it. So they end up letting Grady Martin, the guitarist who played the part on Don't Worry, they end up letting him record an instrumental called The Fuzz using that. And then soon after that, the channel completely dies. And then people were upset with them because then they thought, oh, you're just saving it for someone else or you don't think we're, wor you don't think we're fuzz worthy or what have you. 
So Glenn Snoddy decided to, uh, to make a, uh, a device that would replicate that sound. And so he worked with Revis Hobbs, who was a WSM uh, TV and radio engineer. So just to give you a little bit of history, WSM is the, uh, you know, the, the call letters of the Grand Ole Opry. And that's originally from a, uh, an insurance company, and it stands for We Shield Millions. Okay, so they had the Grand Ole Opry, which the Grand Ole Opry was there to promote their insurance company and to help them sell life insurance policies door to door. And WSM also has uh, and still has a, uh, uh, a television station here in the Nashville area. So anyway, so Revis and, and Glenn Snoddy together designed a fuzz circuit and they took it to Gibson. Gibson thought it was a great idea and... They, uh, they bought the idea from them. So Gibson, so let's, let's get the timeline. 1960, the song is recorded with the blown channel. 1961, it becomes a hit. 1962, they sell the idea to Gibson, and Gibson starts selling them. And the first year, they ship 5,000 of them. The second year, they ship three. And in 1964, they don't ship any. So what that tells me from working for a manufacturer and being around the business is Gibson produced a lot of these, forced them on their dealers, or strong-armed, whatever, whatever you want to call it, and then all of a sudden, they didn't sell to consumers. You know, so guitarists did not pick up the, you know, they didn't, you know, they weren't buying those maestro fuzz tones at, at Gibson dealers. And so therefore, you know, of course, the guys kind of dug in their heels, the dealers dug in their heels and said, hey, I'm not going to take any more of those, you know, those, that weird pedal. But guess what? Right around the corner was 1965. And in 1965, the Rolling Stones had a hit with Satisfaction, which featured the Maestro fuzz tone. So I'm not sure where Keith got his, you know, who knows if a distributor in England still had one or a store, you know, was sitting, sitting there, but uh, he used it. And what's really interesting about this fact that, that he used the fuzz was he really wasn't meaning for it to be the hook of the song on the guitar. Okay. So he used the fuzz tone because it made it sound more like a horn. And he thought that the producer was going to add horns to it, and that's what was going to be playing the line. But they ended up turning up the fuzz part really loud, and that you know became it. And there never were horns added. So Keith, you know, Keith has said that he envisioned what Otis Redding did with the song. So Otis Redding covered Satisfaction later, and he used horns to play the part, the you know the the opening line. So. That's, uh, that's how it all got started. It all started on a six string bass and, uh, you know, Grady would have used a Dan Electro because again, it was 1960 and, and this type of instrument wasn't released. Fender didn't release the bass six until 1961. Now there could have been a prototype that went down there, but I, I doubt it. Um, you know, F Leo Fender actually borrowed Harold Bradley's uh, Dan Electro six string bass and, uh, you know, and took notes off of it and then sent it back. And in return, he sent Harold Bradley a, a gold sparkle bass six, but Harold and most of the Nashville guys did not like the bass six because it was, it was heavier than the Dan Electro because the Dan Electro's, you know, hollow masonite. Also it was, it was longer because you have the six on a side machine heads and you have the bigger body and it was just, you know, a little bulkier and also the, the tremolo and the third pickup and the, you know, the, the interesting switching with the strangle switch and everything that it just didn't appeal. So yeah, Grady Martin used the uh, Dan Electro six string bass through that on a crossover pop country tune. And that's what launched fuzz and Glenn Snoddy, you know, designed the, uh, the, mo the maestro fuzz tone and uh, it went from there, but then it took a couple of years to catch on. So it's neat. Uh, again, on the tune, I just love the. I think the uh, the the bend is really really neat. Let me uh, let you hear uh, 
hear this with the with guitar real quick just because you're going to be more you know familiar with that and also talk a little bit more about the fuzz unit that i'm using today so this is my 57 esquire and i'm uh i had dan strain put a a black pit guard on it so uh anyway so i'm, I'm not sure I, I like the contrast but i love the white guard look also so if y'all want to comment on that do that below but here's Here's the guitar with the with the fuzz all the way up. So there you have that. So I do need to uh, correct something I said in my last fuzz video because I'm I'm using an Analog Man Sunface, the 2N uh, version. And in uh, my other video on fuzz, I indicated it had a clean mix and it actually has a clean trimmer. So there's no dry signal being mixed in. What the clean trimmer does is it uh, backs off the gain going to the transistors. So it's basically just like pulling back your volume control on your guitar a little bit. And so, you know, basically you don't have to be fiddling with this so if you have a certain fuzz you know cleaner fuzz sound it, it enables you to get that uh, very easily so uh just a, a little correction there and i think that's a, a great feature on the uh on the sun face so yeah well i hope you've uh enjoyed this look at fuzz and i need to give a little plug to uh to fender so fender sent me this uh, mustang micro and I've just really enjoyed this a lot. Um, you know, just like like learning the lick to, uh, you know, don't worry about me. I, uh, you know, just plugged this thing into the, the base six and then I was able to use my phone to stream the song on here. And then I was able to silently, you know, with headphones, play along with it and learn, you know, learn the part. And this has just been a great learning tool for me. I think it's about a hundred bucks and uh, yeah. This is really fun. So uh, thanks again to Fender and uh, y'all ought to check this out. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. Hope you've enjoyed today's episode and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.